Welcome or welcome back to Really Haunted Places. Tonight's story takes you to haunted places in Wisconsin. The Maribel Caves Hotel has come to be known as Hotel Hell thanks to some of the strange things that have been going on there throughout the years. There was originally a health spa on the site which was in operation in the late 1800s, but the hotel was built there in 1900. It was constructed from limestone blocks giving it an unusual fort-like appearance. A fire broke out in the hotel in 1985 and it closed down shortly afterward. Since then, the tales of the paranormal surrounding the hotel have continued to grow. As well as tales of floating objects, apparitions, unsettling feelings, and people being touched by invisible hands, there are also much darker tales. It is said that a coven of dark witches use the empty building and that they even manage to open a portal to hell allowing the dark entities that now haunt the building to come through. It seems like Hotel Hell really lives up to its name and it remains one of the most haunted places in Wisconsin. Hospitals are always a good choice when you are seeking out a haunted building and St. Joseph's Hospital in Marshfield certainly fits the bill. The paranormal activity here seems to be more or less restricted to the west wing of the hospital. One of the most commonly reported apparitions is a man in a black robe who has been seen by staff and patients alike wandering the halls and coming in and out of patients' rooms. Nobody has managed to determine who he is or why he is haunting the hospital. Summerwind was once a summer home for Robert P. Lamont, who was the Secretary of Commerce under the Hoover administration. The property was built in 1916, and if the stories are to be believed, it was plagued by ghosts from the outset. When Lamont died, the property passed through a number of owners before the Hinshaw family bought it sometime in the 1970s. They soon began to experience the paranormal activity that Lamont did, shadow figures and strange unexplained noises. Arnold Hinshaw claimed that he found human remains behind a secret door in the closet, but there is no record of him ever officially reporting it. The next owner was Raymond Bober who reported seeing a ghost that he believed was an 18th century explorer named Jonathan Carver. The manor was eventually abandoned in the 1980s and a lightning strike burned it to the ground. The remains of Summerwind still can be found hidden away in the woods and many people also claim that they have seen the ghosts and heard disembodied voices in the area. Callan Road in Ripon, Wisconsin is better known as Witch Road, largely because it is said to be haunted by the spirit of a witch that inhabits the woods surrounding the road. Those driving the road at night describe how the gnarled branches of the trees cast gruesome shadows in their headlights, before taking on the form of a twisted old crone, the witch. Some have seen strange flashing lights in the woods close to where the remains of an old house believed to have belonged to the witch is located. This is certainly one of the most haunted locations in Wisconsin and is not for the faint of heart. It is said that the Grand Opera House, which was built in 1883, is haunted by Percy Keene who was the stage manager there for several decades. The paranormal activity seems to be focused on the balcony which is where Percy is most often spotted. There are also reports of a phantom dog, unexplained footsteps and a strange orange-tinted mist that hovers on the stage. Another Wisconsin hotel that has a reputation for being haunted is the extravagant Pfister Hotel in Milwaukee. 
It opened back in 1893 and contains the largest collection of Victorian artwork in any hotel in the world. It is said to be haunted by the ghost of its namesake, Charles Pfister. Guests have reported hearing phantom footsteps inside their bedrooms in the dead of night. This is a world-class hotel that carries a hefty price tag for overnight stays, but it is still one of the most haunted places in Wisconsin. There is a certain stretch of County Highway 66 that is known informally as Bloody Bride Bridge thanks to the specter that is said to haunt it. Local law enforcement denies that the accident described in the local legend actually occurred, but residents in the area will tell you otherwise. The story suggests that several years ago a bride and groom were driving home from their wedding when the car spun out of control, as they crossed the bridge that carries Highway 66 over the Plover River. Several years after the fatal accident, a police officer is said to have struck a woman in a wedding gown while driving across the bridge, but when he got out to investigate there was nothing there. On turning back to his vehicle he found the woman, splattered with blood, sitting in the back seat. Many people since then have seen the bloody bride standing on the bridge on rainy nights and local urban legends. Say that if you stop on the bridge at midnight, both the bride and her groom will manifest in your back seat. I want to thank you for watching. And until then, good night.